Hello everyone, I'm Alp. And I'm Harris, and welcome to the Imperial College Aeronautics Departmental. Hey, and welcome to the BOSS space. This is a collaborative area with both MechEng and CivEng, as well as the Aero Department. It's a great place to get work done, as we have lots of tables so that you can work in your groups. We also have the meeting rooms as well, which is great for group meetings. Um, we have a kitchen over there where you can heat up any food from home. It's also a great place to grab a bite and talk to friends as well. This is Skempton 164, your primary lecture theatre for first and second years. It has a capacity of 160 students holding full class lectures. It also has plug sockets at every seat for charging your iPads and laptops. There are pr two projector screens at the front of the lecture, ensuring that everyone has a good view at every seat. All lectures are also recorded, which may be required for later viewing. Welcome to CAGB 300, the main lecture theatre in years three and four. There's a capacity of 150 and it hosts full class core modules, as well as a number of optional modules in the final two years. Similar to SCEM 164, there are two projectors, two whiteboards, a visualizer, and facility for recording every lecture. This is the undergraduate common room. We have a social area with sofas of, of capacity about 40 people. People come here to hang out, maybe play some board games. There's a work area at the back with 23 computers. It's a bit more relaxed environment than the library. Uh, people also come here to eat food. They either get food from the campus outlets or they bring their own food from home and use the two microwaves to heat it up. The practical element of our undergraduate degree is carried out through laboratories. In aeronautics, we're concerned with structural and aerodynamic testing. Structural labs are carried out in the Student Workshop, Tech Suite and Roderick Hill. This is the Aeronautics Student Workshop with a wide range of hand and machine tools. Undergraduate students use this room throughout their course for labs, design build test projects and extracurricular activities. Some of the activities done in this room include the materials lab and wind turbine projects in first year, the structures buckling lab in second year, the duocopter control lab and wing banding labs in third year. Some of the st student societies who use this room include the Imperial College Aerial Vehicle Society or ICAV and the Imperial College London Rocketry Team or ICLR. ICAV uses this room to build their unmanned airplane to compete in the IMECI UAS challenge and Nihal will talk more about ICLR. Hi, I'm Nihal, and I'm the Systems and Integration Team Lead at Imperial College London Rocketry. The team was started by four aeronautical engineering students in 2018 in order to educate and train future students in the field of rocketry. We have built numerous rockets over the past four years and participated in competitions such as the European Rocketry Challenge in Portugal. This year, we are building a 4.6 meter long, six inch diameter student-developed hybrid rocket engine that will be participating in the 3000 meter category. As you can see, we have a few of the components that will be flying on our competition rocket this year. <laughs> you can work on wonderful projects like this if you join the Department of Aeronautics at Imperial College London. So get applying. This is the tech suite made up of more advanced manufacturing equipment such as 3D printers, laser cutters and an automated fiber layout machine. The room is used by both undergraduates and postgraduates for a range of projects and societies. Beside me you can see the first year design build test exercise wind turbine blades which were manufactured using the 3D printers in this room. Welcome to Roderick Hill. It houses many of the wind tunnels including one of the largest in Europe, the 10x5. Many of the labs within Aero are held here such as the pipe flow and flow visualisation lab in year one and flows over cylinder and natural frequency characterization in year two. In year three, the structural testing of a flat bracket takes place here, which you'll design in the aerospace vehicle design course. Aerodynamic testing from undergraduate laboratories to cutting edge research is carried out in the 10x5, T1 and T2 subsonic wind tunnels. Supersonic testing is carried out in the high speed flow and hypersonic wind tunnel facilities. Aerodynamic characteristics of various aircraft are tested in the flight simulator facility. Okay, so behind me is the department's 10 by five wind tunnel. This is one of the largest low speed tunnels in the UK. So the test section is 10 by five feet. So it's about three by one and a half meters. And uniquely, it's about 20 meters long. So it runs the whole length of this laboratory. 
And what that's really good for is studying the development of wakes and for generating really thick boundary layers. So we do a lot of civil engineering testing in this wind tunnel. So for example, if you have a football stadium or a new cityscape that you're interested in building a tall building, then we can use this wind tunnel to simulate what the airflow over the, over a real, over the planet, so over a real terrain approaching a city would be like. Uh, we also use this wind tunnel for automotive applications, so we test cars, uh, as well as aviation, so aircraft and related aeronautical stuff. The 10x5 wind tunnel is part of something called the National Wind Tunnel Facility, which is a collection of wind tunnels in the UK, uh, many institutions, and really allows external users to make the most of these facilities. So it's not just staff and researchers and students at Imperial that can use this, but it's also university staff elsewhere around the country and also companies. So much of the research we do here is actually paid work, paid consultancy from companies such as uh, wind engineering firms and civil engineers as well as automotive We have a number of high-speed wind tunnel facilities at Imperial, uh, including a supersonic and a hypersonic wind tunnel. So our hypersonic tunnel can test up to Mach 9, and our supersonic wind tunnel tests at Mach numbers, so that's the speed over the speed of sound in air, of around Mach 1 to Mach 4. So we're actually building a brand new supersonic wind tunnel, which is the, in the room behind me uh, at Imperial, and this new wind tunnel will be a little larger and faster than the one we had before. So this new tunnel will go up to Mach 5 and it'll allow us to test at higher pressures and temperatures than we've been able to test before. So our undergraduate students use the supersonic wind tunnel in their third year uh, as part of a laboratory for one of the modules on aerodynamics and we actually get them to use the wind tunnel, they visualize shock waves and take pressure measurements and see how the theory that they've learned in lectures compares to the reality of when you have a real flow in a wind tunnel environment. Hi, my name is Camille and I'm fourth year undergrad here at Imperial studying aeronautics and these are our wind tunnels. This is T1 and on the other side is T2. These low speed wind tunnels are used in experimental aerodynamic research and in teaching for years one and two labs. In year one, you use these tunnels to test the wind turbine blades created in the design build test exercise. In second year, the wind tunnels are used for the aerofoil profile drag and weight momentum deficit lab. The maximum speed of T1 is 42 meters per second and the maximum speed of T2 is 50 meters per second. And they're also used in final year projects extensively as well as in PhD research. This is the Department of Aeronautics Flight Simulator room. There are two static and one full motion flight simulators, all using the explain software. First and second year students uh, use this room for the flight dynamics labs, and you can do more specialized projects in here during your later years of study. In addition, some societies such as the Pilot Society use this room for training. In addition to all the rooms we've seen so far, final year undergraduate students, masters and PhD students have access to a set of cutting edge research laboratories, such as the Aerial Robotics Lab, the Dynamic Fracture and Forming Lab, and the Space Research Laboratory. Okay, so welcome to the uh, Spacecraft Engineering Lab. Uh, this piece of equipment you see behind me is a high vacuum test facility, and the sort of testing that we do here is to test spacecraft propulsion systems. So we develop two types of spacecraft propulsion systems in the lab. We develop electric thrusters, which are plasma thrusters, which use a beam of ions in order to generate thrust. And we do conventional chemical thrusters, where you burn a fuel and you burn an oxidizer together and expand the hot gas out of a, a nozzle in order to generate thrust. So the sort of experiments uh, which we would support in this chamber are industrially sponsored research projects, uh, projects supported uh, by government research programs, so for example, European Space Agency. But in terms of student level projects, within the final year, uh, the students working with our group would have the opportunity to conduct some uh, cutting edge research using these uh, sort of state of the art test facilities. Uh, and they would be developing their own thrusters or their own diagnostics or their own experiments and then running the experiments under our supervision within these uh, vacuum chambers. So in addition to the vacuum chamber itself, you can see that there's a lot of sort of equipment that supports these sort of tests, ranging from the operation of the vacuum supply system. Uh, if you follow me over here, We have the uh, power supply electronics, we have the propellant feed system, so you could see there's uh, tanks in the corner of the room. 
Uh, so between the propellant management, the electrical power supply systems, and the actual diagnostics equipment used to do the testing, you have everything you need in this lab in order to develop sort of uh, spacecraft propulsion hardware. Hi, my name is Oscar. I'm the research engineer at the Aero Robotic Labs. The lab is head by Professor Michael Kovic. Uh, what we are doing here is to build different drones to facilitate the research topics uh, from bio-inspired robots to um, using drones to do the manufacturing process. And also, we are, our group is also interested in using drones to do the environmental sensing and doing the sampling of different uh, challenging environments and scenarios. Uh, what we are, you are going to see here is, is our lab, where we do all the design process and also the project planning of the drones. And also, we have got a nice workshops where we can build the drones together with different parts and also programming using robotic techniques and algorithms. And then we have an indoor area where we can carry out all the drone tests and performance evaluations of the drones. And this is a really great place for um, doing your research work and also um, try to implement something from scratch and try to see it happening. This is the dynamic fracture and forming lab used by both aeronautics and mechanical engineering. Both PhD, masters, as well as final year undergraduate students use this lab. Some of the testing includes impact testing, 3D strain mapping using cameras, one and 200 kilonewton fatigue testing, as well as 50 kilonewton universal mechanical testing machines. These machines are capable of tensile, compressive, bending and strain loading. 